Hello, I'm Chuck Phillip, and welcome to another edition of Southern Home Talk. This is going to be a follow-up episode to one I just did on a clean-out that I installed on the discharge side of my septic tank system. Uh, you, you probably don't have to do this, but I did it anyway. Uh, that way I could get product directly to the field lines, bypassing the tank altogether. But not only that, but some of these products that you get off the shelf, so to speak, uh, might not cure the problems you're having with your field line and you may have to resort to some stronger stuff to fix it. Now that is the good news that you probably can fix some of these drainage problems doing this and this is going to save you thousands of dollars because if you call a service provider and tell them about your field lines boiling up in the yard or backing up into the house the first thing they're going to tell you is you're going to have to replace your field lines and that's going to cost you thousands of dollars and it could be well over ten thousand dollars to do this when you could have solved this problem for less than fifty bucks <laughs> there's going to be a lot of people mad that watch this episode and wonder if they could have done that but there's things you can do uh, to mitigate these issues with your system and it's just not knowing is the biggest problem whatsoever and Case in point, if you do a lot of laundry and you use Clorox or bleach inside your uh, laundry, well, you know, that's going to get into the tank and it's going to kill the bacteria inside there, which that's what breaks down the solid waste inside the tank. And other things can do that as well, like detergent, uh, also the detergent used for uh, washing dishes, maybe even some soaps, you know, the antibacterial components they have. Uh, if you use drain openers a lot, uh, that can kill the bacteria in the tank. And so even a garbage disposal, too, can introduce things in there that uh, could give it some problems. Uh, flushable wipes, you know, if they're not biodegradable, uh, that can really create a big problem because they can actually get inside the field lines themselves. And probably one of the bigger ones of all is grease. And so... And what grease will do, it'll actually just waterproof your system. So when it gets in there, it's going to harden up against all the pores and outlets of, of the field line and even into the gravel, and it'll just waterproof it. And so what will happen is this water will just start backing up, and it's either going to boil up in the yard or back up into the house. So always pour that grease into a container. And the good news is, is that there's a places you can take this for for free they don't charge anything and so you know when I was a home inspector I had clients that would ask me about the septic tank system of the home they were thinking about purchasing and wanted to know if I would inspect it and I would not do that because one it's so subjective and there's really no good way to do it thoroughly and so my uh, response to them was that you get with the current seller and ask them when the last time they had it pumped when the last time the field lines were replaced and you know, based, I would go based on that information. It sometimes would be easier, cheaper, just to have it pumped when you moved in instead of paying for an inspector to come out and do this. And it's there again, subjective. Also, you know, it also depends on how professionally this system was installed, and that might not become apparent till years later that it was a defective install. Now. If you install your field lines or have new ones installed, you want to be present when they're doing this because, you, one, you want to take pictures of where they're going to be located because there might come a time where you might want to build something there. And it's just good to know where they are. Also, you want to mark the location of your septic tank. You can see my sign right there where I have it marked and also marked when the last time it was pumped. And so people ask, well, how often should you have it pumped? Well, really, that depends on how abused the system is. If you have a, a lot of people in the household, then it probably should be pumped every three to five years. Uh, if not, maybe not so often, and maybe even less often if you're not using a garbage disposal and, you know, doing these, putting these other products in the system that can mess it up. Now, one good thing about installing this uh, pipe that I installed on the discharge side it also serves as an inspection port, so I can look through that pipe and see if there's any kind of backup or possibly see if there's any 
uh, toilet paper or wipes inside that going into the field line system so I can mitigate that issue as well. Now you'll see this photograph here of muriatic acid next to it and that's exactly why I want this installed on the discharge side of the system. Uh, this is kind of going old school and, and also hardcore as well you know, but that can also clear up some really stubborn clogs in the field line system but it's a dangerous product to work with just know that. I would certainly go with the store-bought stuff first and see if that worked and usually they do work pretty well just know that. So uh, I did an episode on Ridex and some other products not too long ago and I was real skeptical of these because you know usually what's supposed to happen is the natural bacteria and enzymes inside your tank should break down this waste matter without you having to put Red X in it. And But I was curious to see if Red X would actually break down flushable wipes. And so when I first did this experiment I wasn't too impressed with it and I didn't think it was going to work. But as it turned out over time it did dissolve uh, those flushable wipes so now I start to, have, start to have a little more faith in Red X. And so I, I think uh, that I would probably use this occasionally, but I think I would only start using it in case I was having problems first. Uh, I just think I would sort of wait for that. Now, another thing you can do uh, to greatly mitigate this problem with your field lines is to uh, have a secondary drain line for your uh, washing machine. Uh, that alone will take a tremendous uh, stress off your septic tank system. Now that may not be allowed by codes in certain jurisdictions but I do know if you take your washing machine off of it uh, it'll go a long way in uh, creating longevity for your septic tank. Now another thing you want to know is where are your clean outs because if you don't know where they are and you have a plumbing and emergency, you know, that can be a pretty big aggravating issue. And you may even have some under your sink, like you're looking at in this photograph. But uh, there also could be some at ground level. This is a picture of one that was installed while this house is being built. Now, uh, these are ways that you would clean out your sewer in case it was clogged up. And you, another way would be to get on a roof at the top of the vent there. You know, some people take a water hose with a jet nozzle and run it down it, but you want to make sure someone's inside the house in case it, there's a loose fitting where it blows off and starts soaking the inside of your home. But you'll notice that the screen is on top of here. And I did that when I had my tank pumped about six months ago. Uh, I was down there present for this as well, like you should be also to make sure they pump your tank. But when they opened the lid, uh, thousands of mosquitoes came out of there. It's like something off Raiders of the Lost Ark. And so I says, man, how in the world did they get in there? And as it turns out, they were just flying down the vent stacks and hatching in the septic tank. So my septic tank system was nothing but one big mosquito hatchery. And there's also other ways they could get in as well. If you look at this laundry uh, drain here, uh, they can actually fly down through that. And I guess if you did your laundry to flush them on through down to the septic tank, and now they're, <laughs> that's where they are. So just know that the best thing to do is put these screens over these vents and I know it shows rubber bands here but I would use electrical tape. So anyway I'm not going to keep this any longer than it should be. I uh, appreciate you taking the time to watch this.